Lesson six, now we're going to talk about creating claims and submitting claims. So once we've gathered all the patient information, the provider information, and the encounter, the patient visit information, and we've entered that into our practice management software, that's when we can create an electronic claim. We usually do this in batches. You can do that individually, and I'm showing a screenshot here of our practice management software, and this is very similar for for many different practice management softwares, it might look a little different. But this shows just several claims that have already been entered and created. And what we would do in a situation like this is we would go there over there on the left side of the screenshot. We could select individual claims or we could select all of those. And typically, a, a busy provider will see several patients in a day or in a week. And so you'll usually want to create a batch of claims and send those in one file. And those are uh, usually uploaded to the clearinghouse and sometimes you can you can also upload those to the individual insurance payers but that's uh, more typical to, to submit those or upload those to the clearinghouse. While we're talking about the clearinghouse, a clearinghouse is, is very beneficial because it checks your claims and scrubs them for errors before it submits them to insurance payers. It allows you to send one claim file as one batch and it sends those to several different insurance payers. So, for example, the previous screen, I showed several claims. Well, we would send that in one file to the clearinghouse, and then it would be uploaded to the clearinghouse, and they would process that and kind of disassemble that and send each one of those individual claims, which goes to a different insurance company, they would send those to those correct insurance payers instead of, if you had to do that individually, it would take, an extremely long time and it would be very inefficient. It's also a central location for checking your claim status and, and the status with the insurance payer. They send back a status report to the clearinghouse and you can check your claim status uh, just about as soon as you upload your, your claim file, uh, especially with the clearinghouse. And then once they process it to the payer, you'll get periodic updates on this, on the, whether they've accepted it and, uh, it really gives you a, a great way of tracking your claims and making sure they're clean and getting through to the payer. It also allows you, if, if problems are detected, you can correct and resubmit those claims without having to go back into your practice management software to do that. Uh, now, some practice management software also has a clearinghouse services built in so that you can send your claims directly to the clearinghouse. The, the example we used Practice Mate is integrated with Office Ally, so you don't have to print a file, create a print file, and then upload it to your clearinghouse. It's sent directly to the clearinghouse. Uh, otherwise, you, you just print out, like I mentioned, uh, a claim file. If, if you can print out paper claims, you can print an electronic file. You can also submit them directly to insurance payers, and the concept would be exactly the same. It's just that you're claim would be uploaded to each individual payer per their instructions and in, on their website. Here's an example, some screenshots from our clearinghouse example, and this is with Office Ally. And it's really, really simple. If you can upload a, a file, it's just simple. Uh, you go over to the left where it says upload claims and just click on the upload claims link and that brings up a dialog box and you go choose your file browse for your file and then just click the upload button and then once they're uploaded the screen on the right shows what the claim looks like at the clearinghouse once it's uploaded and it looks exactly like the paper CMS 1500 claim and you can go in there and edit fields correct fields and save it and 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 then send it for processing to the insurance payer claim attachments Probably the best way to handle claim attachments is through the clearinghouse also. Most of these have the capabilities to attach electronic documents, but you do have to be set up for this. It's, it's a pretty simple process, but it's so much easier to send claim attachments electronically than to send them, print out a paper claim file and a, attach all your paper documents and mail it in to a, an insurance payer. It's much more efficient to send them electronically and they'll get paid faster too. So claim attachments, they're periodically needed to be sent with a claim. And I just wanted to go over that 
sending them electronically, typically through your clearinghouse, is, is the way to go. When you send an electronic claim, it has to clear multiple hurdles. It has to be checked or scrubbed by the practice management software before being transmitted. Some practice management softwares will do that. Some have that capability. It also is checked for errors when you upload it to the clearinghouse. And then once the clearinghouse transmits the electronic claim to the insurance payer, they also go through a, a process of, of checking the claim prior to accepting the claim for processing. Now, once the insurance payer accepts the claim, it has to go through their process, the adjudication process, which it still is, a, is probably the last hurdle, and that claim still can be adjusted or denied if it doesn't comply with their guidelines and, and their rules for processing. And, and here's, a, here's an example of a screenshot that shows an error where the provider was not enrolled with the payer. So those are the kind of claim errors, the claim problems that can happen at the end of the at the end of the journey for the claim. In this case, there are so many claim errors, and we get really deep down into claim errors and coding errors in the uh, fundamentals course. But I just wanted to show you what a claim error might look like from a payer, and give you an idea of the uh, process that a claim goes through to get paid. So that concludes Lesson 6 on the processing of a claim. In Lesson 7, we'll be discussing fraud, abuse, and compliance.